If you didn't know, Clash of Clans has its own version in China, and it's got some very interesting stuff going on. Like goal chat, chest, crazy cosmetics, and even a way to max your base instantly. The game there is almost unrecognizable, and today, we're gonna check out everything that is different in this version of the game. Okay, so I made this chart here of all of the differences. Yes, I very much felt like that one meme. <laughs> Let's start with the monetization. I'm gonna need to explain some things here first before everything else makes sense, like the different currencies you'll see throughout the entire video. There are two new ones, some kind of tickets and gold tokens. These tickets are basically a middleman between real money and gems. There are some strict laws there in China around in-game currency and gambling, so these tickets are often used throughout the game as money. And you can do anything with these tickets, even buy gems with them. Think of them as gems 2.0. The gold tokens are similar to Clan War League medals. They're a premium currency that can be used to buy rare items like hammers and other magic items. Yes, in this version, you can buy hammers without having to play Clan War League. In fact, you can buy any magic item at any point. There's an entire tab full of magic items in the shop that can be purchased with tickets. Another interesting tab in the shop, according to the translation, is the Honor Store. This is where you spend those gold tokens I mentioned earlier, but you can also spend tickets to buy chests. These chests are still a mystery to me, I couldn't find any information on what exactly they do, but if I had to guess, it seems you pay tickets for a type of chest, hammer, resources, or potion, and you can pull random items from that category. Wild. Now, continuing on the path of monetization, I wanted to take a look at a feature that involved money, but was outside of the shop, like the season pass. There are a few key differences here, but the most obvious one is that now there is a diamond pass option. It doesn't seem like the diamond pass has its own track. However, it does have its own exclusive rewards, including those gold tickets we mentioned earlier, 1200 challenge points, and an extra seasonal builder, aka the seventh builder. This is the least craziest thing in this version of the game, and I wouldn't be surprised if the global version gets a diamond pass sometime in 2024, but obviously without those gold tokens. There are also some extra items in the track that you can collect, like this spoon looking thing. However, it doesn't matter what it is. All you have to know is that it's simply a currency for the gacha system, which is the next topic. If you're unfamiliar with the term gacha, it is basically a way to obtain exclusive or rare items with in-game currencies. That spoon looking thing, or whatever the hell it was, is a currency for a specific reward. So you take that spoon, head on over to the gacha menu, flip through the tabs, and there it is. These statues and scenery require you to spend spoons for a chance to obtain them. More on that stuff later. The more spoons you put, the better the chances of unlocking those rewards. You'll also find different stuff that you can spend your spoons on like this hero set. All in all, it doesn't sound all that bad until you realize that it never guarantees what you're going for. Chances are you'll be pulling stuff like 1000 Dark Elixir or one wall ring, one potion. These gacha systems are designed so that you can spend as much money as possible trying to get that big reward. Some rewards are very rare and others like this one are more common and require you to do tasks to get whatever you need to spin that lotto. In my opinion, it's a terrible design and I'm so glad the gacha system is not in the global version. But the many ways you can spend money doesn't end there. Gemming to max. It sounds like a YouTube video title, right? Well, in this version of the game, it's a literal feature. And I really wish I was joking right now. Starting at Town Hall 4, you'll see this button appear on the right of the screen. It opens a screen called Bulk Upgrade. The first tab is basically instructions on how to use a feature. It explains that you can upgrade everything in your base to max, except for the Town Hall with a click of a button. The second tab highlights everything that will be upgraded and the cost of it in tickets. Based on the progress so far, 3130 tickets converts to roughly 40 to 45 dollars USD. But the number of tickets does get higher and higher depending on the progress made thus far and the town hall level. It could be 200, 300, 400 dollars. Finally, the third tab lets you pick a layout of how the base will look after you do the bulk upgrade. It lets you pick different base designs, which is kinda cool. <laughs> but the idea of jumping to max with a click of a button does kind of defeat the purpose of playing the game in the first place, and I really don't understand what's the fun in paying to max. Let's switch gears here a bit and talk about something that you've probably been anxious to hear about. Global chat, or in this case, the horn chat. 
Yes, this version of the game has a second chat that is not the clan chat, and it's very weird. Starting at Town Hall 4, you can obtain a new magic item called the Magic Horn. The description explains that it has great power, and when used, it will deliver your message to all players. And that, it does. Not only will your message appear in this new chat, but it will also appear on every player's screen at the very top, like a scrolling text. <laughs> I can already see this being used to troll people. But apparently, when this magic item was introduced there, the only way to obtain it was through a very expensive pack of magic items that was about $91. So right off the bat, this was a premium feature. Anyways, back to the chat. Yeah, that's basically it. You spend magic horns to send a message to the world. And as far as I've heard, this was introduced to help with clan recruitment. The only other thing that I noticed was that some messages have banners that make them stand out more. These can be won through the gotcha system. I'm not sure if it's a one-time use or a permanent thing, but that's where you would attain them. This new chat is not a terrible feature, but it's basically global chat with extra steps and limited usability. You have to spend a magic item every time you talk and your space is limited, so yeah. Okay, I think I've been ignoring the elephant in the room long enough, and that's the various kinds of cosmetics that you've seen throughout this video. Which, by the way, are nowhere to be found in the global version. A lot of these new cosmetics are unlocked through the gacha system, so you have to play your chances there, which can be quite costly. But we already went over how that works, so let's start with sceneries. So far, there have been two new ones, an underwater scenery where your base is situated in a massive turtle, the surrounding areas look like it has a kingdom under the sea, honestly pretty cool. The next and most recent one is the Heavenly Palace, as far as I'm aware that's what it's called. It is very grand and incredibly detailed. By the way, both of these sceneries can be zoomed out hilariously far, <laughs> I don't know why. It's like the scenery has some clash of clans in it. <laughs> they also have intros, like if you visit a player with one of those sceneries, it plays a little animation before it loads the village. Then there are the hero skins. I don't want to look at these one by one, but I gotta say, most of them do not look like the heroes we all know and love. There are two main male heroes and two female heroes, and sometimes you can't even tell which one is which. Like it even went as far as changing the royal champion's skin color. Other than that, I mean the skins are pretty detailed, got some cool animations. There are some exclusive statues that you can obtain as well, nothing special, but I thought that was worth a mention. Some players already have all four, looks pretty cool. And apparently you can obtain uh, birds. <laughs> looks like this is a village effect that you can equip, and whenever someone visits your base or attacks you, the birds come flying in. I feel like I'm talking about a feature in a completely different game. And finally, the most interesting cosmetic to me is Town Hall Skins. Yes, a skin for the Town Hall. So far, there is only one of these, and it looks like it's the exact same for every Town Hall. So if you clipped it at Town Hall 9 or 15, it'll look the same. Has a pretty neat glowing effect. Uh, I mean, I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. But speaking of skins and how things look, this brings me to the next thing that I wanted to discuss. I think we all know that China has some interesting laws around colors and certain themes, and Clash of Clans there is no exception to these laws. So there are troops, hero skins, colors, and themes that have either been removed or censored, like Chugs. The Valkyrie's Queen outfit was raised higher to hide some of that cleavage. Same thing goes for the healer, instead of a strapless dress, she now looks more appropriate. Some other changes, as far as I've heard, the entire pirate set has been removed, including all of the skins, scenery, and even the pirate flag. The poison spell was renamed to the damage spell. The color was changed from red to green. Roman numerals across the game have been swapped with actual numbers. And finally, skeleton references. Most skeleton references in the game have been removed and swapped with something else. Like the skeletons in any troop. They all now have some sort of helmet or mask that hides their skeleton appearance, making them look more like knights without a face. Honestly, uh, kinda creepy. <laughs> The Champions and Legend League badges were changed. Same thing goes for the Super Troop Skull logo. It changed to look like a barbarian. Traps that had a skeleton logo are now just 
blank. <laughs> However, despite all of these efforts to remove skeleton references, the fact is Clash of Clans has a lot of it. So you can still see it in obstacles, decorations, and troop icons. Okay, we've talked about every major change at this point, but there's still a few smaller things to talk about like the UI and everything else that didn't really fit in a category in this video. Like the powerful builder's potion. Yeah, a bigger version of the builder potion that boosts the builders by 24x for one hour. Meaning, you can cut an entire day with this bad boy. See? I know meth. Okay, so now let's take a look at the new UI. We've already discussed what some of the new buttons do, but there's more. Like an extra tab when selecting your scenery to change your town hall skin, and probably somewhere in there to change those bird effects that we saw earlier. In the player profile, there seems to be some kind of banner you can set. I don't have any gameplay of that, but I'm assuming it's that, or it could be that banner you get from the chat thing global. I don't really know. And finally, they do seem to have some sort of daily login system where you can earn magic items and even skins. Looks like you get to pick your reward after X amount of days logged on. After seeing all of the differences between this version and what we have, you may be wondering why? Why is it any different at all and how long has this been going for? Well, it all started in 2021. Due to some new laws there, Tencent, the majority owner of Supercell, could not update any of their games there. To abide by these new laws, the only solution was to have a China-specific version of the game that wouldn't impact the rest of the world. And in February 2022, this would become a reality. All Chinese players were moved to a separate server and eventually their own version of the game. From here on out, game updates, new features, and seasons would have to be added separately to this version, which wouldn't always happen immediately. But also, they could now add different features, including ones that wouldn't have been received well in Western countries, like the gotcha system. Today, the game there continues to evolve, and as you can see, some parts of it are just unrecognizable. I wanted to give a special thanks to KNG, he provided almost all of the footage that you saw today. Without him, I would have been scouting the internet for the best blurry image I could find of all of this. His channel link will be down below, he's got some interesting videos like assets that you've probably never seen from different Supercell games, and just tons of nostalgia filled content, things you might have forgotten. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. It's pretty fascinating to see how all Supercell games are changing there in China. I might have to revisit this topic and see what's changed months or years down the road. Anyways, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming outs. Peace!